Do you believe in the concept of, or our ability to potentially reverse aging? Because you did just mention if it's just rich people, I, I heard an element in your voice that theoretically, there could be a possibility of this. I'm curious your stance on that before we move forward. Well, I think anything's possible um, and should be looked at. That the This therapy is based on the idea that telomeres are the reason that we age. And those are the caps on the end of our DNA. Oh, and as they shorten, for most people, as they get older, the thought is if we can make these longer, maybe people live longer, maybe they sort of de-age a little bit. But there was a study that just came out this month that looked at 380,000 people and found no correlation between their health, the rate at which they're aging, and their telomere length. Aging is very complex. It's not just genetic, there's also environmental factors involved. And this just feels like too quick a fix to be something that'll actually have an effect on people's lifespans. I do believe in the idea of slowing aging, but the idea of reversing aging, where you're saying you could take someone who's 75 and make them be like they're 25 again. I'm dubious, number one, but number two, I have just as many concerns with the price tag and here's why. It's not a clinical trial if you charge people a million dollars because you introduce all of these biases. So why would you do it this way if you truly believe that this works? First of all, uh, it, it is considered by the government now a normal way to do clinical studies. Uh, recently, the government has approved the idea of what's called a pay-to-play model uh, for extraordinary circumstances when a study is so expensive it can't be done any other way. There are studies that never got done because the uh, people doing the study were never able to come up with the funding for it. Other things that were discussed here is about, is aging a disease? Well, there, it turns out there's life forms on this planet that have no detectable aging. That includes lobsters and humpback whales and tortoises and clams. Some of these animals have been shown to be over 500 years old. Uh, if they don't age and we do, I kind of consider that a disease. Generally, a clinical trial is supposed to have a placebo, right? So how are you going to justify charging someone a million dollars and not being able to give them some form of a placebo or something to see that might not have any gene therapy aspect to it? I just, I just feel like a rigorous clinical trial is usually randomized, clinically controlled. You know, there, there is always a placebo aspect of it. And then the secondary aspect is this trial isn't even an efficacy trial where they could prevent reverse aging. You're just trying to make sure it's safe, right? That, that it doesn't cause cancer, that it doesn't cause an immune response. So, so it just doesn't seem like it's level with the other clinical trials. Well, this is a safety study. It is a phase one safety study and patients that will be in it are suffering from a terminal disease such as having been diagnosed with Alzheimer's over seven years ago. Uh, I, it's actually, their, their risk is actually higher from not being treated than being treated. So we are looking at safety, but there's nothing wrong within a safety study looking to see if there's any efficacy too. This has never been done in humans, okay? This is a first in human study. So uh, I, I can't say I know it's gonna work. This is, this is why we do studies, to find out if something's gonna work. Even if this works, Initially, the people who are all going to have access to this technology are people who are going to be able to afford it, correct? It's going to take time for you to, to democratize this, right, where it would be reasonable and accessible to all. So then you have this subset of people where they can afford this technology and therefore their families and their progeny. And we already know that access to housing and education and all these factors that he mentioned give people who are socioeconomically advantaged longer lifespans, better quality of life. Now you add in this other aspect, like is aging now stigmatized? You must be poor if you're getting old. You know, like if there's, there's going to be a lag, a time lag where there's a significant disparity in the haves and the have nots for this, especially in terms of resource utilization.